Today we will be doing microservices pattern by Chris Richardson. In the end, I will give my personal review of the book. Uh, how, what did I like about the book? How, what the things I was missing? It will, it's a little bit nitpicking. So st stick till the end of the video. Uh, to hear my personal views about the book. We'll discuss a little bit what is in the book initially. The book starts with the monolith hell. It talks about in the current environment in the where we are deploying applications on the cloud uh, monolith architecture which has been used for a long time. Uh, it creates a lot of problems of deployment, maintainers, uh, in what is monolith architecture? In monolith architecture, you build a huge app which is hitting one database. Then he talks about the microservices. What are the microservices advantage? Microservices are small, easy to maintain. They can be deployed independently and they can scale in individually. That's what we need in this cloud environment, cloud computing environment. We are our million of users are hitting our webs, uh, our applications through internet all over the globe. Then the second chapter, he talks about the architecture of the microservices or how to build our microservices. He goes into the definition of architecture. And architecture has many definitions. The basic idea of architecture is what is the relationship of a system between its components, between uh, relationship, uh, relationship of components to each other. Then he talks uh, uh, talks about the Conway's law. Conway came up with theory that software architecture of the organization will be reflection of intercommunication of the department. What it means is how how the your company has been uh, organized. Architecture would be like that. And I have personally seen that we, when we working with uh, some partners, uh, third party partners, we build one part, they build another part of the application and our, our architecture reflected that. So that's uh, that's an anti-pattern anti not to use that. In, oh, how, how Microsoft, he talks about a service. What is a service? Service is something which can be deployed independently and gives some value to the business. He talks about the business capability model that microservices should be representing the business capability of the organization. He, he, he then other good principles of uh, decomposing microservices are definitely the solid principles. He goes into the solid principles, how solid principles can help us to build some good applications. Then, th then the next chapter, he next chapter he talks about the inter-process communication. This chapter was very very uh, interesting to me personally. A, like uh, a, a, an enterprise integration, uh, when you you are building monolith applications, you are not talking thinking about inter-process communication integration between different applications. So he talks about uh, what are the pub uh, about publishing point-to-point -point connection versus, versus uh, publishers, publishing subscribing model and uh, he talks about message broker and you can use Kafka uh, rabbit message queue for the messaging uh, what is the importance of asynchronous messaging so uh, this chapter was great and then he gave a whole chapter on transactions. Transactions can be very, very challenging and very, very important. So that was very useful chapter to me, uh, transactions. Then there's whole one chapter on event sourcing. Event sourcing is uh, uh, another pattern. I have a video on that. Do check that out. Event pattern is like uh, you, you develop code based on the event. You deposit your money, event happened. Uh, you withdrew money event happened so that way is very easy to lo log it's very good for deployment and uh, in uh, cloud computing it's very very important 
that you keep the processing simple so that you can handle a, a huge volume of transactions. Next uh, whole one chapter is dedicated to CQRS that is command query uh, a segregation pattern. So uh, again uh, in uh, cloud computing what is command query segregation pattern? In command query segregation pattern the component which update update the uh, database you keep them separate so, uh, separate application separate databases and the applications which read you keep them separate databases are kept separate that way you can optimize the databases for transaction insert and uh, also uh, the reading part where are you are querying the database you can optimize that database for querying part the benefit why why you need that because it, the you need if you are trying to retrieve information fast you need indexes and that may slow down the insert update delete so this there's a tension between updating and reading uh, reading the one so when you use cqrs design pattern you remove this tension then he talks about uh, that the testing testing of microservices i found that very very it was very detailed very informative he talks about a lot of uh, javascript framework uh, how microservices uh, add challenges microservices have to use other microservices how you can isolate those services there are some framework which mock other services so that you can test your own service so uh, the, the, that chapter uh, was very detailed, comprehensive, very informative. And finally, the deployment. The deployment chapter again had a lot of uh, information that services should have visibility. They should have logging capability because when they are services, we, and the, the distributed log is very, very important. We should be able to follow the order how is suppose somebody placed an order and it went through a lot of system we should be able to follow through the order if you see my last video on kafka how kafka came into picture the linkedin was trying to build out a pattern what the users are doing on the linkedin they were going through the different system so that's how the kafka was built uh, again, uh, the configuration uh, is very important. You have to externalize configuration. You want uh, cloud computing. Uh, you, your application has to be 24 seven into seven all, all, all the time up. So uh, whole week, every time. So it's very important. You have a logging. Uh, you don't bring down application for long time. You use circuit breaker pattern. So coming to nitpicking. Uh, the last lot of ex it's more examples are, are Java based. Uh, he talks about in first ch chapter a hexagonal architecture versus layered architecture. This hexagonal architecture may not make sense to C sharp developers. We are more clean, whereas clean architecture could have been more common term, which is used across the company. And uh, examples are C sharp Java. I hope he has some C sharp. Uh, online section he could have uh, uh, he, he he could have targeted a bigger audience maybe uh, not uh, including some c sharp related framework because in in the most of his, his uh, examples are in java uh, the testing framework is also using java spring framework so if if you uh, so uh, should you buy this book the the important question should you read this book it's about not only spending money; it's reading. So, if you are a new, uh, if you are new to cloud computing or microservices, if you have some experience of C sharp building component, you have good concepts of object oriented programming, and you want to get an idea of microservices, it's a very good book. Uh, even uh, if even you are C sharp guy, I would get say some you will get some value. So, uh, uh, for experienced person, uh, uh, 
there may be some, some information may be useful so it, it may have limited value if you have been doing microservices you know event sourcing pattern uh, you are doing test driven development of course if you, uh, if you if you are advanced user you would not be watching this video you would not be buying this book so i overall i enjoy reading this book uh, enjoy reading this book so thanks for watching this video uh, if you like this video like it share it and subscribe to this channel for your regular updates happy programming